Hey, I think that you and I have something in common. Ten years later, and we still do not completely understand what does service-oriented architecture mean, isn't it? So, here is our last chance, and this time it's different. You and I are going to watch this presentation together and try to figure it out. And to be very candid, I'm not sure about you, but if this does not get the point across, I will never ever watch any SOA presentation again. So here we go. But even before I introduce myself, let me chat a bit about the person that I have always admired and cherished. The person that had a profound impact on my life. This was my uncle Walter. He was born in 1879, never married, and he was a New Jersey resident. Let's see how he looked like when he was born. Seven years old, 68 years old, really old, and this is just before he died. So let me introduce you to his business. My uncle Walter loved everything about fine arts. He even used to be an artist, he used to paint and sculpture. He admired artists, spent most of his vacations in galleries and museums. In early 60s, when the pop art was born, he acquired three stores, renovated them, and started an advertising campaign. So let's take a look at his stores that he acquired in New York. The first one was on 34th Street and 7th Avenue. The second on 37th Street and 6th Avenue. And the third one was on 42nd Street and 3rd Avenue. Note in these photos the corel pink, chestnut, cherry blossom pink, cornflower blue, and the burgundy colors. So the next question that you may ask is what did he sell? Well for this exercise I'm going to ask for your help. I'm going to display a number of images each of which will remind you an artist that was active in the 60s. Let us start with this one. That's true, Andy Warhol. And this? That's correct, Georgia O'Keeffe. And this? Jasper Jones, that's true. And who was the artist that used to take photos in national parks. That's absolutely right, Ansel Adams. And who was one of the founders of Cubism? Picasso, that's true. And who was affiliated with action painting? That's absolutely right, Jackson Pollock. And what about this? Well, Uncle Walter sometimes had very strange habits. He used to collect artwork from artists that you and I would have a hard time pronouncing their names. And here we have a great opportunity to learn about Walter's business practices. As you can see, there were four principles that drove his business operations. First, divide and conquer. Stores did not communicate with each other. Second, no collaboration. Stores did not work together to promote the business. Third, no process, no sales process. For example, a visiting customer would get the merchandise and then pay later, or first pay and then collect the goods. Fourth, total autonomy. Stores operated independently. So let us see how he ran his business. On 34th Street he had a store, a store manager, an office, a cat, a secretary, an accountant, and a car to deliver the goods. On 37th Street he had a store, a store manager, an office, a secretary, a cat, an accountant, 
and a car to deliver the goods. On 42nd Street he had a store, an office, a secretary, a cat, an accountant, a car to deliver the goods, and a store manager. And here are their names. Otto, Thelma, Mike, Archie, Gertrude, Lowell, Bert, Lucille, and Rufus. In 1970, a disaster struck. Wall Street lost ground and people stopped buying arts. Walter was in a big trouble. He had shortage of cash, a huge payroll, frustrated staff, and more. These problems led him to believe that he is about to lose his business. Please help, Uncle Walter pleaded. What should I do? Close stores, get out of business, or sell? Well, I do not really think you should sell said Mike the accountant. Let's try a different arrangement at this time. So what did Mike's business analysis render? Let me tell you what is the main problem. It's the business strategy, stupid. We have three chief issues to address. First, duplicate responsibilities. Two or more employees perform the same duties, such as secretaries and accountants. Second, Redundant business functionality and process, accounting, debt collection, consumer credit, and more. Third, silo business operations. Advertising is handled independently by each store. Consumer information collection is also managed by each individual store. Merchandise delivery is another example that is performed separately by each store, and more. And finally, here is Mike's proposition. First of all, Walter needs only one cat. Our business needs one main office. Walter needs one secretary. Our business needs only one accountant. Our business needs one truck. And how the new business strategy looks like? We are going to have one store center, one accountant, one secretary, one cat, one car, and obviously one office that connects the three stores and the store managers. Will Walter succeed? Hmm. Will he be able to solve this puzzle? Do we all have open minds? And the answer was, let's try it. And five years later, wow, Uncle Walter, you're a genius. So how did Uncle Walter recover from his financial problems? He improved management performance, decision making and planning, eliminated unnecessary and redundant resources and processes, reassigned resources to new and productive tasks, consolidated investments, reduced redundant business functionality, automated and improved business processes, shared and reused existing resources and assets, utilize an integrated external and internal business facilities and services, increase workers' efficiency and productivity. This is also the promise of service-oriented architecture. If you must have a definition for SOA, here we go. It is a business concept governed by organizational best practices and standards devised to foster two things. One, Agile business execution and two, software elasticity. And now is the time to introduce myself. My name is Michael Bell. I work for Methodologies Corporation at modelingconcept.com. I co author a book with Eric Marx named Service Oriented Architecture A Planning and Implementation Guide for Business and Technology. I wrote a service oriented modeling book service analysis, design and architecture, and my recent publication is SOA Modeling Patterns 
for service-oriented discovery and analysis.